this is a new and me Hello everyone, you are in the Don Dimension. Hello everyone, and welcome to another Don Dimension car review. Today, I'm going to be showing you this 2010 Volkswagen GTI. Hey, if you want to see me review more cool cars like this one, make sure to hit that subscribe button, and also hit that like button if you like what you see. I'm actually pretty excited to do this review because I bought this car about uh, two months ago and to get it I uh, sold my 2010 Acura TL super handling all-wheel drive oh that was a really great car but now I just wanted to move on to this one uh, because I've, I've always wanted a hot hatch and you know this one is a little bit more efficient it's got some good cargo space and um, just something new to try but I think it would serve me pretty well as a commuter car so that's kind of why I got it so let's just start with uh, the interior before we get all to the fun stuff start with the steering wheel the steering wheel is uh, pretty nice I really like it because you know it's the perfect size uh, the 9 and 3 are really comfortable to rest your hands on now the 10 and 2 notches are there and uh, it's got a flat bottom which is really cool it's definitely got some sporty components uh, to it and it looks really nice with its uh, Volkswagen logo in the, the middle as well as the silver plasticky metal accents. The gauges are pretty standard with uh, easy to read font. What I do like about them is that they have uh, time driven, distance until empty, and also your current fuel economy. So the radio. I think it's a pretty good radio. It's a touch screen, so that's pretty good for 2010. Not as many bells and whistles as my uh, Acura TL, uh, the technology package had. So it doesn't have the backup camera. It doesn't have um, like navigation or anything like that. So it's basically just a radio, but it happens to be a touch screen. And at this point, I'm kind of torn. Like some, some part of me kind of liked the early 2000s where you just have buttons and stuff. Because it's a little annoying once in a while, like the, the preset buttons are kind of small. So when I'm trying to press them, sometimes I feel like I'm gonna miss if I'm, like I wanna pay attention to the road, I don't wanna have my index finger trying to like aim at like a missile or whatever, trying to hit the button. It'd be nice to just have a nice seek button. And then there is a tune knob, which is good. So it's kinda of to each his own, what you like better on the, on the radio. And uh, besides that, uh, one thing they did really well in this car is the climate control. Uh, they're very simple very easy to understand there's only just three knobs and a few buttons so you got your uh, temperature control really obvious you got your fan speed and then you got uh, you know where there's coming out slash defrost and also you can make it AC let it circulate through the cabin and moving on to the shifter so the shifter they did a really good job on it's, it's a pretty good size throws are probably medium short I would say not like not like a short throw shifter but it's not like a big truck either it's nice it's got a uh, red accent on it kind of going with the design language of the rest of the car rest of the interior uh, the shift boots really cool nice uh, leatherish material and you got metal accent with the black it's really nice really comfortable to hold in your hand it's really smooth very ergonomic I'm glad that it has a real e-brake, because you know a lot of cars nowadays, they just have a little lever, like a, a tiny little lever, or some sort of button. So it's still got a lot of classic elements of, uh, 
the driver's car. And I like how it's not uh, not too much going on here. Like, yeah, the touch screen, there's a few buttons on there, but that's not too complicated. And then overall, the materials in the, inside the whole car, they're, uh, they're really high quality. It's not an Audi, but it's a Volkswagen. And uh, Volkswagen makes some pretty good stuff. Like the plastics, they're pretty nice. You've got the, this kind of woodish material. I can't actually see, it's getting dark. You, got, you just got different kinds of plastics, but they're all really nice. Uh, it all looks really good, really clean, really fresh uh, feeling here. And you know, as long as you like the plaid seats, you'll be pretty happy with this, uh, this interior. So that is what I'll move on to next. So it's, uh, I guess Volkswagen, they kind of had a polarizing design with their, uh, with their plaid seats. Kind of a love and hate relationship people have with it. I personally am on the side that uh, that enjoys the look of them. They're unique. They're just kind of they're just kind of classy, sharp, and they don't incorporate any weird colors. It's still all the colors that they've been using throughout. So it's all good, and uh, the seats are really comfortable, and they're cloth. So one advantage of that is, in the summer they're not they're not going to melt you, and in the winter they're they're not like frozen feeling. So that's good, and uh, the seats hold you in really nice because the bolstering is that of uh, a sports car. So, like right now, I'm taking a pretty, uh, pretty sharp corner at like 30 miles an hour, and I just uh, feel the seat holding me in nice and tight. But it's not too tight where um, it's like attacking your kidneys or anything like that. And yeah, the back seat space, it's okay. It's not too bad. Luckily, I got the four doors, so. It's a little more versatile in that way. You can have passengers. I haven't really had people complain that it's tiny, but also it's not like a, like a Ford Taurus or like an SUV. And moving on to like the storage and stuff. So in the front seat area here, there's not too much storage. Um, so one good thing is like the map pockets, there's like a bottle holder in there. So that's one advantage. But the center console is pretty much um, the tiniest center console I've ever seen. You can put like a couple CDs in there and um, you know the aux cord can fit in there. That's about it. It's not very good. And then the glove box. The glove box is uh, about average size. Maybe a little bit on the smaller side but it's not great. And then uh, so yeah, up front it's not the greatest storage. But uh, moving on to the trunk, you have a good amount of space in the trunk. And it's really nice, kind of one of the reasons I got this hatchback is because you can push the, the rear seats down. Then you have a whole lot of space. And um, the rear seats, they go down like 90% flat. So you can get a pretty good amount of stuff back there considering this is a really small car. It weighs about uh, 3,113 pounds, I think. So, with that said, let's uh, move on to the performance. Uh, so this car is uh, a two-liter four-cylinder car, and it's got a turbo, which is uh, which is really fun because I've never owned a turbo car before. I've always uh, I've always been kind of like a VTEC guy so far, or just uh, or you know, 350Z that I had that was that wasn't that torquey, but naturally aspirated so this uh, two liter engine makes about 200 horsepower and it achieves that at 5100 rpm and then uh, here's the fun part it makes 207 pound feet of torque which is pretty good uh, for what kind of power we're dealing with here and it makes that at 1700 rpm so that's why with this car it's really fun uh, so right when you step on it you know, pretty much right away, you feel that torque and you're kind of back in your seat. So it's a lot of fun for a car with uh, 200 horsepower, which is a uh, moderate amount. And like I mentioned a little bit before, and uh, the car weighs uh, 3,113 pounds. So, you know, it's still on the lighter side. It's a little heavier than, uh, you know, other hatchbacks. Like I know the like the Pontiac Vibe or the Matrix, they weigh like maybe 2,800 pounds or something. But it's still on the lighter side, which is good. It's nimble when you're driving it around corners. 
it still feels uh, really light on its feet. So in comparison, like my 350Z, you know, that car is supposed to be light, but it's like, you know, like 3,400 pounds or something like that, which was kind of annoying, but it's still, that one also felt pretty light on its feet. Another thing to add, um, this thing is front wheel drive, which I think if you have uh, good all season tires or winter tires, you should be fine with a front wheel drive car. So I mean, with my Acura TL super handling all wheel drive, I had uh, I put decent all season tires in there and that was good, but I think I can survive with a front wheel drive. Because now that car had like low 20s at best uh, miles per gallon. And this one's much more efficient. It's like uh, 21 city, 31 highway. So it's pretty good. And uh, if it was all wheel drive, then it would that'd just be heavier and less efficient. So, you know, being that it's a front wheel drive car and there's 200 horsepower and that torquey turbo, you can get a tiny bit of torque steer. But it's not, it's not, uh, it's not too bad. It's not crazy like a Mazda Speed 3 or, you know, a car with a decent amount more horsepower. So yeah, not much torque steer. I would say this thing handles pretty good. It's really planted and you can take it around corners pretty confidently. And what's nice is that the... The hood drops down right away. It's pretty short, so you're pretty much your eyes are right right on the road. So another good thing about this car is the visibility. None of the pillars are really getting in the way. Like the A pillar is pretty small. Uh, the B pillar is like right in line with your with your ears, so it's really easy to look behind it at um, where your blind spot would be. And you can also see beside you, pretty nice. Um, the mirrors. They're not like really adjustable. Like you don't, there's no like adjustable controls, but they placed them, they placed them perfectly. I'm always pretty confident in these mirrors. And the rear view mirror, that's uh, pretty normal, but the C pillars don't really get in the way. I mean that it's a hatchback and the, the hatch window is, uh, it's not like a tiny window. Your view is really good on all sides. So I think it's a pretty, pretty safe car to drive in that respect so I'm just gonna take a corner here and report on the body roll yeah this is a really planted car um, not much body roll at all feel pretty good driving this car pretty confident like the Acura TL, that had um, that's not you know that had all this technology. Basically, it would direct power to whatever wheel uh, needed it when it's going around a corner. This car doesn't have that stuff, but the fact that it's just more nimble, it's more you can chuck it around corners. That car was you know had a lot more power and stuff, but it was just heavier. It felt more like a chore to drive. And this is just like woo, you know, zip around and just kind of an entertaining car and since it's got 200 horsepower I mean you've all heard this uh, this idea before where it's you know you can have the legal fun that kind of thing so it's not an insanely powerful car so you can accelerate for a little longer before you're uh, speeding yeah so another thing about driving this car like long distances like I said before, it's pretty efficient, and also another good thing about it is that it's not too loud in here. Like when you really put your foot on it, you can kind of hear that that nice gurgle sound, a little bit of a uh, little bit of the turbo, but uh, it's not it's not really loud. Nice and quiet in here. You can have a conversation on the phone on your Bluetooth. I forgot to add that it does have Bluetooth. So it's fully equipped with like the, the essentials. I mean, this was obviously pre-Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So it doesn't have that. It's also got the auxiliary and uh, it's got one power outlet, which um, I wish it had a couple more, but at least it's got one. 
Let's see about the acceleration. Yeah, it's really, uh, it's really fun to drive. It's fun enough where, like, once you feel that turbo kick in, you're kind of thrown back in your seat a little bit. You're having a lot of fun, but then, I mean, it's not terribly fast, so you're not gonna get in trouble right away with this car. But it's definitely quick enough to have fun. Like, for like most of the time, for me, I'm just driving it to work. I'm enjoying, um, just enjoying being in this car. With the manual transmission, with the, the nice smooth shifts, it's really easy to shift this car into gear and the clutch, that's about, the clutch is pretty easy to use as well. It's got about a medium travel distance and engages around the middle of the travel. I mean, Volkswagen did a good job building this car. You can tell it's it's a well-built car. High quality, everything you touch, everything you use is pretty high quality in here. Like 65 it's not like crazy fun it's, it kind of reminds me so you know like 200 horsepower 207 pound-feet of torque those aren't like you know impressive numbers by any standard but uh, it kind of reminds me of the, the Honda Civic Si I mean that's obviously not a turbo the driving characteristics aren't the same but it's more fun than the numbers would say a lot of fun to drive this car, but yeah, like I said, most of the time I'm just driving it, uh, commuting with it, driving it nice and uh, nice and normal. But I'm always able to enjoy shifting it, and then once in a while, then I'll goose it a little bit on the entrance ramp or something like that. So it's a good all-around car to have. So if you're thinking of getting a 2010 Volkswagen GTI, just ask yourself, what are you going to be using the car for? Are you going to be commuting with this car? Are you going to be taking it to the track? Or is it like your weekend fun car? Or like a project car? Well, so, so for me personally, I'm using it as a commuter car. It's good because it gets about 30 miles to the gallon on the highway. That's really practical. This one has four doors, so you can, you can have passengers. It's not a, you know, a two-seater car. But it's not too loud. It's really sensible. It's got uh, cargo capacity, especially if you put the rear seats down. And, um, yeah, it's not too bad in the winter either, as long as, as long as you know how to be careful. So, I hope you enjoyed this car review of the 2010 Volkswagen GTI. Have a nice day.